I want to start this video with a huge trigger warning. It is about the Chicago Blackhawks sexual assault case, so if that is not something you are in the state to currently handle listening to, I fully support that. I will be back with actual videos about on-ice hockey in the coming days, but this one is rather important. So you can go ahead and click off of it now, and I'm sorry that you've had to come across a bunch of news about this on your social media outlets. So with that being said, a lot has happened today. The biggest thing, of course, was that the Jenner and Block investigation results were released publicly. It is a 107-page report. A lot of the last pages there are end notes, but it is a pretty long report going around 80 or so pages. I've spent most of the day since that was released trying to read through it. I had to take a lot of breaks here and there because it is very heavy. There is a lot of info in there, a lot of very disturbing information in there. If you would like to read the full report for yourself, I will leave a link to it in the description down below. Very big word of caution. There are a lot of details in there about what happened, and it is not easy to read. There are going to be a lot of articles all over the internet letting you know what happened in that report without giving the explicit details of the sexual assault. So if that's more along the lines of what you are looking for, I will leave some links to some wonderful Twitter accounts for you to follow down in the description as well. And before we really jump into the things that happened today and also what is in the report, I have to give a huge thank you and shout out to Rick Westhead and Katie Strang, two absolutely fantastic journalists who did not let this story die. And Rick especially, he was the first one that I saw reporting on it and he wrote a lot of stories about it and really kept it going. Katie's journalism was absolutely fantastic. Links to both of their Twitter accounts will be in the description. So I think the best way to go about this is to talk about it in the order in which I took in the information today. I received an email late morning about the press briefing about the Jenner and Block investigation. Unfortunately, or probably fortunately, I had a therapy appointment at one o'clock, so I couldn't attend it myself virtually, but a lot of wonderful beat writers and reporters around the league did and gave us a bunch of information from it. Aside from the release of the full report, the biggest piece of news is that Stan Bowman is no longer the general manager of the Chicago Blackhawks. Kyle Davidson, who was the assistant GM, will take over as the interim GM of the Blackhawks. Al McIsaac is also out of the organization as well, and Danny Wirtz said that no front office officials who are with the team in 2010 will be with the organization going forward. And for this upcoming Olympics, Stan Bowman also stepped away as GM of the U.S. men's hockey team. As for the report itself, a lot of it was things that we already knew because of the fantastic journalism that was going on throughout this whole investigation, keeping the story alive. But we did get more in-depth detail. We got actual quotes from people involved, be that in the actual sexual assault itself or the people who were in the front office for the Blackhawks. We learned officially who who was in the meeting on May 23rd to discuss what had happened with Bradley Aldrich. It was Al McIsaac, Jim Gary, the team counselor, John McDonough, Stan Bowman, Jay Blunk, Kevin Sheveldayoff, the former assistant GM to the Chicago Blackhawks, the now current general manager of the Winnipeg Jets, and head coach Joel Quenville. Formerly, Quenville had said that he didn't know about these allegations, so that clearly was false. Sheveldayoff also had said that he didn't know about any allegations until right before his employment with the Blackhawks was up and he was asked if he knew anything. So unless that's very loose talk for this meeting being near the end of his employment with the team and that's when he found out, then yeah, I guess. But now we know that all of these guys were actually involved. And that's part of where it gets very disturbing because we learned that the Blackhawks never actually did an internal investigation about Aldrich, which in their statement earlier this year when this story broke, they said something along the lines of, according to our investigation, we believe that the team will be absolved of any wrongdoing. So clearly that was a lie. But two things that really stuck out to me is especially when it comes to this meeting with all of the top guys in the front office was that 
John McDonough didn't want negative PR following the team throughout the Stanley Cup final, and allegedly Joel Quenville was talking about how it took a lot to get to this point and he didn't want that ruined and he didn't want to mess with the team chemistry by bringing this forward and getting rid of Aldridge, possibly, or doing an internal investigation. And one of the quotes from Danny Wirtz today really cemented that when he said that the 2010 Blackhawks put the team performance above all else and John Doe deserved better from the Blackhawks, and yes, yes he did. It's absolutely disgusting that the team waited at least three weeks to bring this to HR because they wanted to get through the playoffs first. They couldn't have this as a cloud over them in the Stanley Cup final. They would rather go out there and win a championship than to take care of one of their players that was sexually assaulted by a team employee. And I have to say that that tracks for hockey culture and probably sports culture in general. That's not surprising. It wasn't surprising in a way to read that because it's just kind of what you expect, which in and of itself is disgusting, but it was surprising in a way because you never want to see that confirmed, especially for a team that you root for. And it has been very hard to root for this team since this whole story dropped. It has nothing to do with their on-ice play as of late. Yeah, that's been tough to watch, but this team was hard to talk about to find any way to want to talk about them even over the summer. Because on the highest level, they were just brushing sexual assault under the rug and just basically telling John Doe that his issues don't matter right now because we have to go win a Stanley Cup and then we'll deal with you. So that was the biggest problem, really. Because at the end of the day, no matter what other feelings come up surrounding this, a player for the Chicago Blackhawks was sexually assaulted by a team employee and the team couldn't be bothered to take that seriously. But from a fan perspective, which is really the only perspective that I can actually speak from, it just feels disgusting. Yeah, that might not have been the true beginning of the golden years for the Chicago Blackhawks, but that really cemented it as the beginning of the golden years. You can't have three cups in six years without the first one. But now every time you look back on it, it's just a gross pile of sludge in the brain. Because something that you're so happy about, your team winning the championship after 49 years, that's absolutely amazing and you're so happy about it, but then you find out what was happening behind closed doors. And then that just kind of changes everything that you felt or thought that you knew. And that is hard to come to terms with. So if you are a Blackhawks fan who is dealing with that same thing, know that you are not alone in that. I wish that I had words to make it right on a fan side or to at least make things make a little more sense, especially feelings wise, but I don't. And all that we are really left with is hoping that the organization actually changes, actually takes steps to commit to their promises of being better and doing better. Sure, they let go of Stan Bowman. They let go of Al McIsaac. Well, they allowed Stan Bowman to step aside and the NHL charged the Blackhawks with a $2 million fine, which is pocket change to an NHL organization. You could get a very good good fourth liner for two million dollars. There are currently ten players on the Chicago Blackhawks roster that are making more than two million dollars. Some of them making significantly more than that, so the NHL slapping them with a two million dollar fine that doesn't seem like enough. None of this really seems like enough, but I don't think that anything would really seem like enough. I don't know what the league or anybody could do to the team to where everybody would just be like, sure, that makes sense. That is a good punishment for the team because I don't really think there is a good one. So those are the things that actually happened today and a very brief look into that full report that was released today. Again, if you want to read it all, I will leave that link for you in the description. And there were a lot of statements released today. There was a statement from Danny Wirtz, there was a statement from Stan Bowman, there was a statement from 
Kevin shoveled day off. There was a sort of statement from the Florida Panthers. We'll go over all of those when we record the next podcast episode tomorrow, but I think the only one that really deserves being read here is what Rick Westhead tweeted out that he heard from John Doe 1. So Rick had asked him how he was feeling today, and this was his full response. Today, I am grateful for the accountability from Rocky, Danny Wirtz, and the Blackhawks organization. I also want to thank Jenner and Block, and specifically Reed Shar, for the respect they had shown me throughout the investigation. Although nothing can truly change the detriment to my life over the past decade because of the actions of one man inside the Blackhawks organization, I am very grateful to have the truth be recognized, and I look forward to continuing the long journey to recovery. I would like to thank Susan Loggins for her support and belief in me throughout this process. I would also not be here today without the love and support of my family and friends. I know I am not the only victim in this world of sexual abuse, and I hope my story can inspire change within the NHL and around the world. I am still speechless. So now on the fan side as to where to go from here, how are we supposed to feel? Much like I said in the first video I made about this, but I don't know. Statistically speaking, there is a large amount of Chicago Blackhawks fans who are victims and survivors of sexual assault, and today has to be especially hard for them and any other victims and survivors around the NHL and around the world. So if you do know somebody in that position and you are in a close enough space to do so, reach out to them, ask how they are doing. If they don't want to talk about it, please respect that. Otherwise, all we can really do if you remain a fan of the Chicago Blackhawks is to hold them to their word and demand that they actually do better. And if you are having a hard time rooting for the team right now, I totally understand and I am right there with you. Sports are supposed to be entertainment. They're supposed to be our escape. And for a lot of us, that's exactly what they are. But then you have to remember the human element to it too. And all of those guys out there on on skates are people. They have real lives and this stuff happens more often than you would like to think. So we can't just stop by demanding change from the Chicago Blackhawks. We have to demand change from the league as a whole for them to actually take this seriously. And I'm not sure at this point if I really have faith in them doing so. Gary Bettman said that for Anybody who was let go today to get jobs back in the NHL, they would have to have meetings with him. He's going to hold meetings with Kevin Sheveldayov and Joel Quenville to see where they go from here. So the fact that they just aren't outright fired and banned is leaving me with little hope that they're actually going to do the right thing. I'm honestly shocked that Stan Bowman was relieved of his duties or allowed to step aside, and I hate that I have to wonder if the Blackhawks were actually playing well right now, would that be the case? Or would they find a way to spin it and say it wasn't Stan's fault? Because another thing that was really frustrating about reading that report is how all of the guys in the front office kind of treated it like they were playing hot potato, like, it's your problem, it's your problem, it's your problem, somebody else deal with it, it's not my problem, I'm not here to fix it, you deal with it. Nobody wanted to take responsibility, and nobody did take responsibility. At least not until the playoffs were over and the Blackhawks had won the Stanley Cup, and then, oh, John McDonough is gonna go to a HR now. Meanwhile, Bradley Aldrich was still around the team. He was still around John Doe. He celebrated with the cup on the ice. He got a day with the cup. He got his name on the Stanley Cup. All of this after the team knew about it. So while it may be hard for all of us to root for this team, if you are cycling through emotions right now, again, I am right there with you. I have felt enraged most of the day. Not just at the fact that my team could do something like this, but just at the fact that this happened at all. It's disgusting. It's disturbing. There aren't words strong enough to describe it. So I think that's where I have to end this because truly after I read the whole report, I was mostly just out of words to say. When it all first came out earlier this afternoon, I was super angry, you know, those immediate reactions. I wanted to burn the whole world down, all of that. But then just after going through and reading it and seeing how disturbing it all is and how 
they were just able to brush it off and not really worry about it. It's just really hard to come to terms with. So if nothing else, and at this point I don't really recall what I have said in this video, I hope that you know if you are a Blackhawks fan or an NHL fan and you are struggling with this, not knowing how to feel other than just grossed out and mad but not really knowing where to place that, you are not alone. And to any victims or survivors of sexual harassment, assault, abuse, we see you, we hear you, we believe you. So that's gonna be all for me on this one. Like I said, there have been some fantastic journalists on this story since it broke, and you can find all of their info down in the description. I will say thank you for watching, even though that kind of seems a little displaced when it comes to the subject matter, but I do thank you for watching if you have stuck with this until the end, and I will catch you all in the next video. Bye, guys.